uh, best and worst of November edition of Wise So Serious. This is Blog and House. And this is Rory Cashin. And we're just going to jump right in yep. with, uh, with the best three of November. Number three is the Silver Linings Playbook. <laughs> Uh, Bradley Cooper plays Pat, who is just released from a mental care facility. I'm trying to be delicate with this one. And uh, he's trying to get his life back on tra track, but he may be slightly trying to get it back on a track that doesn't exist anymore. Mm. Um, and while he's doing this and while he's trying to improve his life, he meets Jennifer Lawrence, who is also suffering from some mental trauma. And together, they find common ground and dance that's pretty much it yeah uh, it's like gone down very very well in America they are like oh we love it and here's all the Oscars maybe but I, <laughs> it's not that good no it's not um, it is it is quite good though it, it is nice to see Bradley Cooper not just resting on his handsome face he's actually trying to act mm. uh, Jennifer Lawrence we, we've spoke of the love of her before yeah, well, um, in case you didn't see that episode, we love Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, I love the fact that she can balance kind of blockbuster films with these small indie films where she gives these amazing performances. She's absolutely fantastic. And she's so young and she's a hater. Pretty, good, pretty face. She has got a pretty face. And Robert De Niro's in it. Yeah. Giving his not best a crap film. Giving his best performance in years. Yeah, this in is his not best film since... Heat? Ooh. Maybe. Ooh. <laughs> It probably is his best film since he. Rest assured, this is reason. not. This is not this is a not um, little fuckers movie or Meet no. the Parents or any of those. No. So Robert De Niro actually gives a good performance. Chris Tucker's in it for about a second. I know that's. But he doesn't movie. scream. I couldn't. He's not like ah Bradley Cooper. Blah, blah, blah. Like he I would be in the, in the Fifth Element. But, that uh, it was Chris Tucker because he gives this really understated, subtle performance that you just don't expect from him. No, yeah. And now he's talking about doing Rush Hour 4, so... Yeah, and the remake of that French film, uh, Untouchable. Yeah. Which, I don't know. He was also Tarantino's first choice for Dango and Chant. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Did you know that? I did. Oh, I fucking know. Uh, <laughs> did yes. you know that, viewers? Comment us and tell us whether you did or not. So, yes, it is very good. It is funny and affecting, uh, but a tiny bit forced, I guess, at times. It does feel like, you know, subliminally, the director and the writers are going, Oscar bait, Oscar bait, Oscar bait, Oscar bait. Yeah. And, it, you know, it does take away from it slightly. But, you know, some films just want to win Oscars. Yeah. So, out of ten. Seven. I, I would also seven. Yeah. Yes. Good. Good, good film. Good work, Silver Linings Playbook. Uh, number two for the month of November was, or is, um, Rise of the Guardians. <laughs> The Guardians are Santi, the Tooth Fairy, the Sandman, and the Easter Bunny. And they are all powered by their the belief of children in them. Uh, and the Boogeyman decides he wants to take their power uh, and he wants children to believe in him. So the Guardians enlist Jack Frost to help them beat the Boogeyman so kids will keep believing in them. Alec Baldwin has big Russian Sandy. Isla Fisher as Tooth Fairy. Yeah. Um, Jude Law as the Boogeyman. He's a good Boogeyman. Gives good evil voice. Mm. Uh, Hugh Jackman is the Easter Bunny. Chris Pine is Jack Frost. And then nobody does the Sandman. Because he doesn't talk. Yeah. But he's probably the best one. Yeah. Because he's all cute. And he's like... Blah, 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 blah. And he, he, he uses his sleepy dust sand to create images to... to talk without talking it's like yeah. it's a great silent character you know, and it was really novel for a kids film to kind of play with that I know Wally did it but it was it was good that yeah they just felt like it. It, they didn't have to it wasn't in, integral to the plot no. film, and it, it worked yeah. it's not that funny for a kids film no and there is there are moments which I think might make the younger ones uh, a bit upset yeah it's quite scary and it's quite dark I mean I know it's a film about Pitch the Boogeyman coming to you know rule the world with fear and all this kind of stuff but it is actually quite dark and that's because Guillermo del Toro is one of the executive producers on it and you can actually see his influence on yeah. the film definitely yeah um but it, Alec Baldwin 
Yeah, Alec Baldwin is great in it as yes, well. He, he has he has these little elves, um, that kind of are a little bit like the minions from Despicable Me, and he has that same sort of relationship with them. They're always underfoot. They're always doing silly things, but they're quite funny and they're quite sweet. But yeah, the animation is amazing. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, amazing. Um, uh, it's rare for me to say that a three D film worked, but the it did. Totally it did. Work. It totally worked. Like they used the technology really well. Yeah, it's probably the best animated movie of the year. Absolutely. I would yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you. Uh, out of ten? Uh, eight? Yeah, seven and a half, eight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so go see that. Kids and adults alike. The number one movie of November 2012 is. Ergo! You go, Ben Affleck! Yeah, good man. <laughs> um, three for three now, after yeah. The Town and Gone Baby Gone. Yeah. This will undoubtedly end up on both of our lists for best of the year. And it will undoubtedly end up on some Oscar long lists, yeah. if not short lists. Definitely for uh, for directing, for Affleck. He's really knocked it out of the park. Affleck is the worst actor in it, as he plays <laughs> <laughs> the least interesting character in the film, who is a CIA agent who has been sent over to... I forgot the country... Well, he's been tasked with getting these people out She's of... better out than I am. <laughs> he's been tasked with getting six um, US embassy workers out of the Canadian ambassador's house in Iran after their embassy has stormed, these six people escape. So he's been tasked with getting them out of Iran without um, the... I don't want to say terrorists. I don't know. No. Without the, the, the Iranian people knowing yeah, that the they're Iranian there. Yeah, the Iranian army, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in order to do that, they decide that they're going to make a pretend to make a movie and pretend to be a camera crew and that's why they're in Iran and try and get these people out. It's interesting, there are no real villains. Not really. No. Um, it's just opposing sides. Yeah. And he doesn't really take sides uh, after like, telling the story. No. Um, very, very, very tense, but also quite, you know, funny in parts. Yeah, I was really surprised. I was really surprised humor. at how funny it was. Alan Arkin and John Goodman play the producers of this fake movie called Argo and I was really surprised at how funny they were and how much they they did alleviate the tension and yeah. they balanced the story out really well. Best supporting actor nods for Defo. Yeah, there. absolutely. So you kind of know how it's going to end, but you don't know if everybody's yeah going to be all right and whether it's going to be, you know, tie a bow on it, nice, neat, happy ending. And towards the end, there is this really tense scene where you literally are like going to be... Like 20 minutes yeah. of... Ah! Who would have thought when you saw films like... Giggly. And bounce and Daredevil. Yeah, that Ben Affleck would come back to be one of the greatest directors. He is the comeback kid, yo. Good work, Ben Affleck. Keep it up. Do yes, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Great, great, great. Uh, and I said, uh, nine. Yeah, also nine. Yeah, yeah. Also nine. The third worst movie of November two thousand twelve was Twilight, the Twilight Saga: Breaking Dawn Part Two. Make sure you give it its full title there. Yeah. We've already done this um, in our previous episode, our Twilight special, yeah. so if you want to hear us ranting about the Twilight films... Copy and paste this link right here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, uh, that one right there. I'll open it in a new window, so then you keep watching this one and then go back to that one. Yeah. Because we, we want you to keep watching this one too. We do. We do. We like you. Keep yeah. watching us. So, number two, the second worst movie of November 2012 was Gambit. Yeah. 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 Uh, Colin Firth hates his boss, who's Alan Rickman, so he decides to come up with a plan that involves uh, a fake Monet. Yeah. Uh, Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz is 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 brought in as part of the plan. Yep. And he did try to sell him a fake Monet, and then you know, make the money back from that. Yeah, and uh, hilarity ensues. Yeah. Yeah. It does feel like rejected dialogue and rejected scenarios and all the rest of it. Alan yeah. Rickman's completely over the top and he doesn't need to be. He's much better when he's being subtle and, and understated and he's playing this brash and over the top character who likes to get naked for no apparent reason. But he's still the best thing in it. Yeah. So. Yeah, Cameron Diaz's accent is really irritating. Really, yeah. really annoying. It's just. It's just. It was not good. It's, it's not good. It's not good. Out of ten? Two. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Two for two. And now the vast movie of November 2012. Which I thankfully haven't seen. Nativity 2, Danger in the Major. This plane is definitely crashing! I actually did well by erasing it from my memory. Yeah. She's reminded me that I've seen it. Uh, I, okay. Uh, David Tennant. Who I love. Is a new teacher at a school. 
but when he gets there, the teacher's assistant has convinced all the kids to take part in a national singing contest. Uh, and he doesn't have any parents' permission, so they just kind of go. And they kidnap David Tennant along the way. And uh, then they get lost in Wales for an hour. And then the last half hour is like a Christmas episode of Glee. Kidnapping kids is kind of awkward in the wake of all these, you know, Jimmy Savile allegations sort of coming out. You know, yeah. you don't kind of want to go down that road at think, this time. <laughs> Jessica Stevenson is in it as well. And space fans will remember her as yeah. Daisy. And it makes me sad that she's, she's doing bad films. Makes but she sad. doesn't get a lot to do because she's pregnant for most of it. Makes all of it, sad. actually. Yeah. Well, did you just She's not pregnant anymore. Mm. Uh, out of ten, you haven't seen it. No. I'm going to give it one. Oof. It's really that bad. And I'm going to. And give I it like kids' films, as you can tell from the other, earlier part, because yeah. Rise of the Guardians. But I'm going to give it one because David Tennant's in it, and that's a bonus point right there. You want to give him one? I I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. George. <laughs> the three movies we're looking forward to the most in December. The merriest you cheer. We we are. Uh, Seven Psychopaths. Mark McDonough's follow-up to In Bruges, also starring Colin Farrell, Sam Rockwell, Christopher Walken, and Tom Waits. Yep. And pretty or or like Olga Kurylenko, mm. and pretty Abby Cornish. We've seen it, so we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna reserve judgment until the review. Yes. Which there will actually be an argument for uh, that review. Second film of December two thousand twelve. We're looking forward to is Life of Pi. Uh, read the book. I loved it a whole lot. I haven't actually read the book, but oh, it's really good. It, it, I saw a few minutes of it at Movie Fest earlier this year, and it looks absolutely stunning. And Lee seems to have. Be working on redeeming himself for his terrible adaptation of the Hulk. I didn't. I didn't really hate that. I hated it. Anyway, yeah. I didn't really like Taking Woodstock, which I think was his last film. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah. Which was weird. Yeah, it was a nothing film. Yeah. And. The Hobbit. The Hobbit. Part An unexpected one. journey. Yeah. Uh, prequel to all the Lord of the Rings films for anyone who has lived under a rock for their entire lives yep. and has come out to go see The Hobbit for some reason. Yeah. Starring Martin Freeman, um, Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen Kate Blanchett is back, also starring Aidan Turner, Benedict Cumberbatch. Evangeline Lilly. Yeah. Um, um, it could go either way. It could go either way. Um, they've split the Hobbit story into three, which is a discussion that is best left for a review. Um, yeah. And we shall see. Yeah. We shall also, see. the 48 frames per second thing I'm interested to see. And IMAX. First and IMAX, IMAX screen in Dublin. Woo! 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 Uh, yeah, so that's uh, what we're looking forward to in December. Go see those, mm-hmm. and then we will be back in a month's time with a review, and yeah. also the best of the year. Yeah. Yeah. The best and worst of the year. Yeah. yeah. So until then, he's been Warren Cashin. She's been Brogan House. And that's been Brian Lloyd. And this has been Why So Serious. Yay! We did it, you guys. Yay!